So this will be our second and also the final part of our JWT implementation using Spring Boot. And the first part, in the first part, we actually implemented JWT. We are able to generate JWT token using username and password credentials. And in case you've not completed the first one, I recommend you go to complete it and feel free to follow the step-by-step -step right here in my website. So this is part two. The part one, you can actually get back to it in this link. And also you see all the step-by-step -step and also the, all the codes. Today's class, which is the second part, will be quite easier. So basically we have the, the web token, the token generated. We now have to attach this token in the header of subsequent requests so that we don't have to keep providing the username and password every time. So we authenticate with username and password just once and subsequent requests will now be using the token. Now, see where we stopped. If I go back to Postman, this is where we stopped right now. We implemented this authentication endpoint. So if you go to slash authenticate, giving your username and password, you receive this token. Now I have to tell you something about this token. This token now becomes part of the authorization header. So now if you go to uh, authorization because now we have body we have well the, the what you signed as a request but in authorization you see Biera space token we are going to be coming to this later but know that the format of the authorization header is Biera space token where this token is a value of this JWT token right here so keep this in mind because we are going to be extracting the token from the header and using it for the request. So let's get back to where we stopped. So what are we going to do now? Let's see. The generated token will be added to subsequent requests as the Biera authorization header. Then Spring Security will be configured to intercept every incoming request once, checking for the correct JWT in the header. So basically, three things will be done after you've authenticated. One, intercept every request and extract the JWT. Two, validate the JWT. And three, set the JWT in the uh, execution context. I think I got the expression wrong. You set the JWT in the security context. So there is a context that would have been a section, a session created by username and password. So in this case, you now use the JWT, the token, to set the security context. So it's not execution context, but security context. So now what is going to happen, what we are going to do now, so you understand, we are going to create a filter that is going to filter incoming requests, checking them for a valid JWT before the security context is set. So what to do is to create a filter that implements the filter method. All right, so they say it says, this is a way to intercept requests. So create a filter class that extends the once per request filter. So I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go to, uh, to the project, uh, uh, to, the, to my directory, and then I'm going to create a new package. I'm going to call it filters. And inside this filter, I'm going to create a filter. I'm going to call this filter JWT filter. Okay. And there is already a filter interface provided. We simply have to extend it. So I'm going to simply extend once per request filter. So this once per request filter is going to uh, handle intercepting incoming requests once uh, for each request. So I'm going to implement methods. There is just one method that says do filter. Now there's a lot to write at this point, and I'm going to be explaining as I write. If you are, if you want, you can go down to check, but it's better I, I write them bit by bit while I explain it to you. And at this point, I would like to reduce the font so that everything can fit into the, the window. So permit me to I think I can use my keyboards. Okay, it doesn't. So let me just go to preferences. I forgot the, uh, the shortcut key for Mac to reduce the 
the font size. So I'm going to just I'm going to use 13 at this point. I hope you don't mind. All right. So let me. Okay. So we have this uh, once per request. Uh, or this uh, filter cl filter class we created. So what are we gonna do in this filter class? It also seems to me that the font is too small. So maybe let me just increase it by one step. Uh, maybe 14 may be okay. Okay, I think it's fine. So take note that the uh, do, fil do internal filter method takes three uh, parameters, the request, the response, and the filter chain, okay? All right, so the first thing we need is to auto-wire the, uh, the, the beans we need or the, the classes we need, we need to auto-wire them. We need the utility class because we are going to be uh, validating the token. We also need the user details class because we are going to be generating the uh, user details from the token. So I'm going to say auto-wired and the first one is uh, private. JWT utility, JWT utility, and we also need um, my user detail service, user detail service. Okay. All right. Now brace up for a whole lot of explanation and a whole lot of coding we are going to be doing right now. Initially, let me just warn you. Initially, it may be a bit difficult, but go through it. Pause the video or start all over again. And go through it a second time it becomes clearer so let's annotate this class with that component and annotation first let's annotate it with that component annotation because of course it's a component so it's it be available to spring all right so the instruction says we need to first extract the authorization header from the request which you, which I already explained to you that this filter is going to uh, uh, examine the authorization header coming from incoming requests. So I'm going to say, so I'm going to say, uh, let's create it as a string, final string authorization header. Is equal to, now it's going to be request.get header request because there you have the request right here so i'm going to say the get header and the header key you need to give in uh authorization all right so we have the authorization header right now what next do we do we now need to perform checks first we are going to check that this authorization header contains the authorization uh token or the JWT token. We also check that it's not empty. And we also check that the, yeah. So that's basically we, what we need to check. So I'm going to say if authorization header uh, is not null, is not equal to null. And the authorization header is uh, the bearer or is it, yeah, so basically, I think I told you before now that we have the authorization header has to be the bearer, uh, the bearer header, uh, which contains the token. So we are going to check that it is bearer, it starts with bearer space. And then the next thing that follows is the token, right? Yeah, so let's go back. And authorization header does start with bearer space, all right? Because that's how it comes, the bearer space authorization token. So if this works, we will now have to, okay, let's just create two variables to hold the username that will be coming and also uh, the, the token that will be, we'll have to check and also the username that we will also generate or will extract. So let me say string uh, username, uh, string, JWT token. For now, let me just initialize them to null. All right. Okay, so once we check and the bearer header contains something, it's not null and also 
is a bearer. The next thing is to check if the uh, authorization token is correct. It has to be validated, okay? So first, let's extract the authorization token. So I'm going to say JWT token is equal to authorization header dot substring. Now we need to take the substring starting from this after the space. So if you have bearer token is bearer space. So the substring starting from the the T. And if we come back here. Let me just use a comment to explain. So if you have Biera space and we have token, it means that the authorization token starts from here. So from Biera we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Actually, 6. And number 6 is this space. And number 7 is from where the token starts. I hope you understand the. I think this is quite clear. So let me delete this comment. Okay, the substring from seven to the end, that is the authorization uh, the JWT token. And the next thing we want to do is we want to now uh, get the username from the token. So uh, J, uh, username is equal to JWT utility dot get username from token jwt token all right why do we need to get the username from token because we also need to check uh, do a bit of check that the username is not empty all right so once we have the token we also have and we also have the username we are now going to check that the username is not empty we're also going to check that the user is not already uh, authenticated, right? So I'm going to say if username is not null, I think I mix it up. It's not that you check that username is user is not authenticated, but check that a session is not already existing with that same user details. Yeah. So um, if username is not null and uh, security context holder dot get context dot get authentication is equal to null. Okay, perfect. Okay, so at this point, we are now going to create user details using this username is equal to uh, user details dot get load user by username and specify the username. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So these are user details. So at this point, we need to validate the token uh, using these user details because it's required to validate the token. So I'm going to say if uh, J, the utility is what you use to validate the token, dot validate token and give it the JWT token. And also it takes validate token takes two, two parameters and it takes user details. Uh, yeah, so at this point we validate the, the token, okay. So where are we at this point? Okay, uh, check the authority. check the username, validate the token. If it's validated, then we need to, let me see. If the, if the, if the user, if the, if the token is valid, then we need to create a username authentication token, username password authentication token. We need to create username password authentication token uh, using the user details. Uh, so we have three parameters to be specified. Okay. 
Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is to create a new authentication token. Okay, that's what we did just now. And finally, we are going to set And finally, we are going to set the Just give me one second, let me just make sure. Yeah, that's really. And finally, we are going to set the 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 the, the, the username password authentication token uh, using the request. So I'm going to say username dot set details a uh, new web uh, dot build details and give it the request okay at this point we now can set the security context because we've done all the verifications and we can now set the security context using this new our uh, authentication token we have so i'm going to say security context holder dot get context dot site authentication uh it's going to be username password authentication token so this is going to be site not get all right all right so at this point we've done all the checks and we now move on to the next step and that will be uh, to actually do the filtering uh, using the filter and and here is called the filter chain you can see right here so simply say do a filter chain dot do filter and give it the request and the response okay at this point we've completed our filter so when this filter runs the request and response the request is filtered authentication is set and the user can now access uh, resources okay there is one more thing we need to do finally we need to tell the security configurer that our state our state is now being managed by this filter instead of for the web security configurer to manage the state the state management which is normally managed by the set by username password sessions is now managed by this filter so we are going to tell the web security configurer this tell it that is that it should not worry about managing the state so how do we do this we are going to go back to web security configurer right here and we are going to say i think i wrote it down here we're going to just set the session management policy to stateless uh, so i'm going to say dot and dot session management uh the session management dot section manage session creation policy is going to be session creation policy dot stateless okay so we tell it don't worry about managing the state all right and finally we will now have to uh, tell this configurer to use the filter for incoming requests. So simply say HTTP dot add filter before and specify the name of the filter. Uh, JWT. Oh, I need to auto wire the filter in here, but let me just. I forgot. So I'm going to just auto wire the filter in here. So. Uh, that I've not done before, so I'm going to say at auto wired uh, public, sorry, private JWT you, uh, JWT uh, JWT filter. That's what I called it. Uh, JWT filter. Let's make sure jwt filter that's fine so i'm going to give this jwt filter and username 
password authentication filter. This is name password authentication filter dot class. All right. So we simply add this as a before filter. All right. So at this point, we two things has happened. Session management have been added and JW till filter request filter has been added using the add filter before. So finally we are done. So how does all this hook up? So the first time we authenticate and the second time we now need to specify the request, uh, the JWT uh, token. So let's see. So first I'm going to save file, save all, and I'm going to run this code. So it started at port 8081. So the first thing we need to do is to authenticate. For now, if I go to try to access some resource, let's say I do get, I don't get anything, so it's forbidden. So we need to authenticate uh, using post to slash authenticate and specify in the request body username and password and send. And we have a token. Now we are going to send this token with subsequent requests. So for instance, let me just copy this uh, token to my clipboard. So I'm going to copy this token to my clipboard and if I go back to now make a request, a GET request, of course, if I go, it doesn't work. So, but if I add the token as a BRR token and I add it right here and I send this request, you can see that it works with the token. So this is basically how to implement JWT token in Spring Boot. It's not been easy, uh, but uh, good enough, you have the step-by-step -step right here in my website. I recommend try to do it a number of times. Even for me, it took some time before I got my head around it. So for now, I'm going to stop here. If you have some challenges, let me know. The next thing I would like us to do, let's now see how an Angular application can, be, uh, can, can actually be used as a front-end to access requests from this API using authentication uh, JWT token. So I remain kind on the genius and please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any challenges, let me know in the comment box below and I'm always there for you.